Hello and welcome to another Quick Tips video. This week's Quick Tips series is on being creative, specifically using the chord track or using the chord track to control a whole variety of different things inside of Cubase. I could possibly say that the chord track is like one of those really annoying musical people. You know what I mean, right? It's those people that know every chord and every chord progression, and they've always got a useful suggestion to help you out when you need it. I guess the main difference is the chord track doesn't really talk back, and it needs you to come up with these creative ideas. So in fact, you're in control of the musical genius. And the musical genius, being the chord track, is always there to give you ideas and to help you create music. Throughout the course of this series, we're going to use the chord track to construct some musical blocks or even construct musical sentences. I want to get the chord track to control different functions inside of Cubase that I don't see all the time. In this first video, we're going to very quickly create a chord progression that we could use as a verse. We're going to add some piano, guitar, and even an arpeggiator over the top. And then we're going to move on and develop this piece of music all inside the box, once again, without using an external instrument. I want to start this creative process with some sort of groove. So I've got a pattern inside a Groove Agent SE4, and it's linked to my transport, so every time I hit play, the pattern will play. It's time to add the chord track. Hit the plus button and add chord track. The chord track needs other components or other tracks to trigger. So let's add an instrument track and click on the browse button. Now we're in the media bay, which is like a large library, and we can see all of the different presets that we have inside of Cubase. I'm going to select a piano sound because the texture seems right to me for writing simple chords. So once I've loaded the instrument in, it's a matter of going up, getting the pencil, and simply drawing in different events out on the chord track. I'm putting them at the start of every bar, but you can put them wherever you want. To hear these chords, we need to set up a monitor. So you can use a monitored track, which is whichever channel is highlighted, or select a specific channel. I mentioned Annoying Musical Genius. Well, if you've got MIDI input turned on in the bottom left-hand corner, you can play any chord, and Chord Track will instantly tell you what it is. I'm starting with C. Jump across to the Chord Assistant and use the cursor on your computer keypad to move over to the next X. The complexity slider will allow you to choose simple chord progressions to advanced chord progressions, and Chord Assistant is going to give you suggestions based on the last chord and the complexity level that you choose. I'm going with a very simple chord progression to start with. Don't ever think that a simple chord progression is stupid when you're first starting to write music. Just remember that a whole lot of people have made a whole lot of money out of writing very simple chord progressions that are very similar to other very simple chord progressions. Anyway, moving on. Let's save that simple idea and create a new track version. Track versions allow us to store different ideas or takes. My first idea is saved, so now I'm going to create four new chords. And we can start again with a completely different idea. This time I might use a different color. So a minor chord. I've got my complexity set to high, and straight up there's a G flat. Now, this is interesting because a piano player might shy away from a G flat because it's too hard to play. But our musical genius continues to give us suggestions. Even that sus4 is really nice because it gives us the inclination that that last chord wants to resolve or go somewhere. Now we can change the voicing between piano to a basic voicing to a guitar. And then we've got stylistic options between say pop down to jazz. Don't feel silly if you don't understand the terminology here. Let the musical genius take care of that. Just tick and untick boxes and find something that you like. That's what being creative is about. I'm going back to the basic piano settings. I want this piano track to have its own identity, so I'm highlighting the chords and dragging and dropping them down. Mute the chord track so the piano doesn't play twice. And now you've got a MIDI file in the piano track. Let's go to chords and turn on voicings. If you've got a MIDI file that hasn't already come from the chord track, let's say you've dragged and dropped it in from somewhere else. Select synchronize track data with chord track and chord track will analyze your MIDI file and sync it automatically to the chord track. And now we can change our voice scenes completely independently of what's going on in the chord track. But yet if we change one of those chords in chord track, the piano will follow. I'm gonna cover this in more depth throughout this quick tips series. It's time to start building this track. And you build a track by adding color to it. And that could be instrumentation or production values. Right now I'm going to go and try and find a guitar. So I'm going through my presets and there's an arpeggiated guitar. Let's have a listen, just playing a note on my MIDI keyboard and it's arpeggiating it. I'm going with Campfire Guitar below because I want to show you how to arpeggiate your own guitar sound. 
Let's turn on monitoring for campfire guitar and unmute chord track and go over to MIDI insets on the left hand side and select Apache SX. Apache SX is a really cool arpeggiator which has actually been in Cubase for some time. You've got a whole lot of guitar and piano sequences at the top but you can scroll through any number of presets. I can quite often find something in the up down menu that I like. I don't believe there's any rules to being creative. You should just play around with the tools that you have at your fingertips. So take some time to check out these arpeggiators inside of the MIDI inserts. Now I'm going into my instrument and I'm looking at some of the parameters. I'm taking the chorus off because I think the chorus is more suited to a strummed guitar part. It's completely up to you to find something that works. Don't go anywhere because in the next video I'm going to show you how to use chord track to control a real recorded bass line. So we're going to use chord track to control an audio file. See you there.